Everybody in crypto understands how big of a deal the presence of a fiat-backed stablecoin is in the current state of the industry. Stablecoins like USDC and USDT are responsible for so much more trading volume than native tokens like ETH or BNB. But up to this point in the Cardano ecosystem, everything's been denominated in ADA because of the lack of a presence of a fiat-backed stablecoin in the ecosystem. And Cardano has been criticized heavily because of this reason, and, and it's a really good reason, but all of that has changed now. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. This has been such a long time coming in the Cardano ecosystem. It's arguably inappropriate to call it a financial ecosystem without the presence of a fiat-backed stablecoin, but that's not something that we have to worry about now. The team over at Mahen has stepped in to solve this problem that others have tried but have yet to accomplish. As of Saturday, March 16th, 2024, the USDM stablecoin went live on the Cardano mainnet, marking a historic moment for the fundamentals of the Cardano ecosystem. Here's the kicker though, this asset is not just going to serve the Cardano ecosystem in ways that any other fiat-backed stablecoin would. USDM implements standards that makes it objectively superior to any other fiat-backed stablecoin solution in the entire industry. If you've seen a lot of my videos before, you might know that I've gotten quite used to making bold statements like that. And that's probably because nobody ever calls me on it, which I invite you to do. But I'd like to think that a bigger reason that nobody ever calls me on it is because I try to do as best as I can to back up everything that I say, which is what I'm about to do right now. First of all, it might surprise you to learn that the executive team behind Mahen has more experience in the industry of finance than Circle does and definitely more than Tether does. I know everybody seems to think that these major stablecoin players are these like mega corporation organizations that are too big to fail. Not actually true. There's an insane amount of growth potential in this industry, and if you think any asset or project is big in any sense of the word, except for maybe Bitcoin and Ethereum, you're not really understanding what the word big means when it comes to global finance. We are so early in this industry, and there is such a long road ahead of us. If you're looking to make the ultimate late game play, I recommend you take a look at opening a digital asset IRA with iTrust Capital. There is no other way that you can trade the top cryptocurrencies in the industry and not have to pay a fortune in taxes at the end of it. It's legitimately a quality financial product, and if you use my affiliate link down in the description below, you can get $100 towards your first account. It's free money, you may as well take advantage of it. And now, let's get back to the video. In the larger scope of global markets and the industry of finance, Circle and Tether aren't actually that big. And honestly, I think the only reason that people use them is because those are the solutions that are available. This industry is still so new, and it's growing and developing, and we're stepping into a phase of blockchain where the legacy products that were the MySpaces and the AOLs of the industry sort of start stepping aside so that more experienced professionals can come and create things like the Instagrams and, and the Xs of the industry. Mahen is just the first of many to display this phenomenon, and it happens again and again in different industries. If you take a look at the resume of just the founding partner, Matthew Plowman, you'll see that he's got 15 years of experience as a company executive with DWS. That's a company that's too big to fail. They rank 16th in the world in highest assets under management with over $876 billion. This guy is the head of money market credit for that company, which comes with a whole load of practical experience that really has a direct impact on the fundamental health 
of Mahen as a company. He's responsible for market research, risk management, and he's led a whole host of reformation efforts in both the US and Europe when it comes to regulatory frameworks around money markets. This right here is way more than I can say for any other stablecoin executives in the entire industry. If it were up to me, I would want Mahen to be a top level stablecoin service provider if it were just to get this guy in a better position to be able to push regulatory change in both the US and Europe. He's the only one that's ever done this before. In the current state of the industry, it's not just about the service. I mean, if it were, then like this one would still come out as superior. But it's also about the transformational change that it brings not just to the Cardano ecosystem, but to the world of global regulatory framework around crypto. Now, when it comes to how the company is run and how they manage their assets, th there are a couple of similarities between Circle and Mahen. They both maintain the strategy of utilizing extraordinarily low risk money market funds in order to store assets safely, but also generate a yield off of them. Outside of that fact alone, I would argue that there are a great many deal of differences between Circle and Mahen. Everything from established business practices to the underlying philosophical framework of how they build their products. We're not gonna go into all of those differences. Uh, we're just gonna look at what it looks like on paper. And on paper, uh, there's one pretty big major difference between these two. Here's the thing. Circle is already leading the industry when it comes to transparency around how they manage their stablecoin treasury. They publish monthly reports on their stablecoin treasury so that the community knows exactly how healthy their stablecoin treasury is at each monthly interval. I respect this standard and practice because it leads the industry, like I said, in the realm of transparency. But Mahen just does it infinitely better. One of the inherent problems with a fiat-backed stablecoin is the custodial risk that comes with that because somebody inherently has to store that fiat. For the first time in the history of blockchain, Mahen created this way where you can view the stablecoin treasury in real time, seven days a week, 365 days a year at every 60 second interval, if I'm not mistaken. With USDM, you don't have to wait a whole month for the next treasury report to come out so that you can know if something shady or underhanded is happening with those funds. This is a patented technology that was developed in collaboration with Charlie Three Oracles to bridge that gap of trust between custodial models of stablecoins and fully on-chain models. A fiat-backed stablecoin has never been able to deliver this level of public verifiability, ever. And in my personal opinion, I don't think there's gonna be anybody to even come close to matching this standard of transparency for the next five to 10 years. I mean, the sheer level of experience that it takes to pull something like this off is so multidisciplinary and so principally driven that I think finding the right people to make it happen is a challenge in itself. But I want to know what you think. Do you think that Mahen is onto something here that can compete with the top level players in the industry? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below or just leave a dollar emoji for engagement. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. I am killing the Wednesday time slot and going back down to two videos a week because I found a job, which I can't talk about yet, but you'll hear about it pretty soon. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.